Hello, my name is Stan Foster. I'm with AutoWindowTinting.com. I'm sometimes referred to in the industry as Professor Tint because of all of the training DVDs that I've made on tinting windows and of course my hands-on training program. Today I'm going to be teaching you the basics on tinting a two-door car. We're going to do uh, double cut patterns. We're going to do reverse roll on the rear window. We're going to heat form the side windows and also the compound curve on the rear window. Before we get started, I want you to understand some of the basics of window tinting and that is when we pull it out of the box, there's a curl and you can, when you hold the piece up, you'll notice that curl and usually that curl indicates to us that the glue or the adhesive is facing out and it's covered with a clear plastic protector. Now, when we tint the windows, we pull the protector off and we spray it with soapy water and then we put it up on the window and we start squeegeeing the water out. A couple of things happen. When you pull that liner and you spray the water, you activate the adhesive system on window tinting. When we take, say for instance, the clear max here, and this is the, the clear max is the hardest squeegee that we use. When you take and you put the pressure, it's a water activated pressure sensitive adhesive. So in the process of getting all of our air bubbles out, we're actually setting up the glue onto the window. The max here is really what we're going to use to really get all of the water out. We're also going to use just some black squeegees of, of different kinds, and these are a lot softer. Uh, that'll get us uh, into, say, wet testing on the rear window to where once we shrink that compound curve, we know that uh, we're done because we can do a wet test and find out. To clean the window uh, before we tint it, really, we're going to, on the back window, we're going to use a quadruple lot steel wool. On the side windows, we're going to use a single edged razor blade, non ammonia glass cleaner, white paper towels, and to finish the cleaning, and this is, uh, there's going to be a lot of tips on how to get a clean application because that's really where it's at in window tinting is patterns that fit and a clean application. We're going to use about one blue square per car and these blue squares or lint free towels really can make a difference in the quality of, of your job. We're going to also tackle uh, say sealing the edges of the, of the patterns when we're installing the tent and we've got to sometimes get behind the trim. And to do that, we have different hard cards. This one here is cut to where we can slide it behind the trim. Uh, usually not a paper towel wrapped on this one. The gold card here, a lot of times we would wrap a towel around it to seal the edges. And this is to get the small finger bubbles out, maybe in conjunction with some heat. But to put that extra pressure on the edges, that keeps the window tent from peeling and that's that's what we want to do, uh, the water activated pressure sensitive. We're going to use a very, very sharp stainless steel blade and a silver OFA knife. You'll see me uh, during the video, I snap this blade off a lot and start with a new tip and that's very important. The part on the back window, the compound curve, and now this is where really we're going to break down some barriers. This is where a lot of window tinners get frustrated. You know, and it's as simple as a bar of ivory soap. We'll put the bar, we'll put the soap on a paper towel, spread it out on the rear window, let it dry, put our film up there, and then using just a basic heat gun, I'm going to show you using distance that we are from the film the angle that the gun is to the film and how fast that we're moving the gun over the film. I'm going to show you how to heat form the rear window and after watching this DVD, look around at all of the cars on the road and probably at least half, maybe 60% or more, have no more curve than the car that we're getting ready to tint. Now this isn't a whole lot of tools, uh, it's enough to get started. There are a lot of tools out there for different uh, types of windows and different situations and we'll get into all of those on other DVDs. Right now, I've got the shop cleaned out, it's ready to go, got the car in there. Let's go down, tint the windows and get the job done for the customer.
uh, all of the window tinting we're going to be working on the outside of the car and then uh, have it end up on the inside. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to do the side roll up windows first and we need an accurate measurement on those windows. So we want to go from the longest point to the longest point. In this case, probably the longest point is down at the bottom. But when I look here, the top of this window goes back a little bit further. So I want to take that into consideration when I'm doing my measurements. And I've got right now, say, 40, no, two and a half, 43 inches from end to end here. So I'm going to actually add a couple of inches to that and make it 45 inches and that way uh, we'll have a little bit to play with on each side because we ultimately want this window to go up without the customer seeing any light gaps. So let's get over here and cut some and film. And also we're going to be using 20 inch film today on the side roll up windows. Uh, I've got a 40 inch box here that I could oh, take and put a razor blade in the middle of the box and split it. But uh, today, and we've got 45 inches. Uh, today we're just going to go with the 20 and the 40. And that's mainly what uh, a lot of shops start out with, or new window tenters, when they're just starting to learn how to tent windows. Uh, they'll get two, two different sizes, the 40 and the 20. And that'll fit most any car. Now, what we're going to have to do with the window film is we're going to have to heat form it for the side windows and, of course, the rear window. Uh, but wet, uh, wet shrink on these side windows uh, and on the back window uh, using the soap. But we can only do that to the factory edge, meaning when we pull it out of the box, just the edges from the factory uh, are the only way we can shrink the film. If we try to shrink it, uh, say, on this end right here where we just cut it, it won't work. What we're going to do also is double cut this window right here, meaning that we're going to make a pattern on the outside, but we're going to have our film set to where we can actually cut that other door at the same time uh, and save us some time on the installation of the car. So let's go ahead and get the window cut and we'll get started on the application. Okay now. Before we cut the window, I said I wanted to double cut uh, the window tinting. So before we, we put it up here on the car, first we've got to get our two roll-ups. And these are just the two pieces that I pulled out of the 20 inch box. First we've got to get these up here so that we can double cut them. Now, when window film, especially this SunTech product that we're working with, when it comes out of the box, it's naturally got this curl to it right here. And we know that the, the, from that curl that the liner part of this film, and I'm just going to tear a little corner loose here, the line, and, and the liner then would be on the outside of this curl. When I put this one up, now I know that the liner's facing me and the glue is facing me. So what I can do uh, is now take this one and put it up exactly opposite to where the glue is facing the glue. And I want to get it up here where this bottom part of the, of the film right here lines up perfectly because that's going to be the bottom part of my window for this application. And this is to double cut the window. And it'll save you some time. What we want to do now is just get this film stuck together. So we're using a little bit of soapy water here. Everybody's going to have their own amount of soap. I'd recommend that you use uh, Johnson's Baby Shampoo on your soap. Some people like more soap and some people uh, don't use any, but you'll find as you get into this industry, a lot of people use just a little soap in there. Makes it slide a little okay, bit easier. Okay, let's go ahead and get the, the double layer off of here so we can double cut the window. We'll get this a little bit wet right now. And the main thing to remember, of course, is for your glue to be facing the glue. And we want to keep track of 
put some water on our window. We want to keep track of what side. This was the way, this side was out that's facing me right now. And this will just help us here in a little while uh, make it easier to make sure that this one, which one goes on which window. So right now, down here I've got both ends overlapped to where I've got plenty of room. And down here at the bottom, it's sliding around perfect for me. I've got just the right amount of soap for me. Right here, I've got it lined up exactly on the bottom seal of this car. Uh, when, I, when I roll the window down in a minute to, to make the top cut, and then when I install it, I'm gonna bump the film down just a little bit. So really, it would, it would be hidden back here. We, we're not gonna get any light, but just to make sure, and we are gonna do this window a little bit differently uh, by taking the gasket out down here. I uh, will be able to drop the film in from the bottom. So I wanna have plenty down here. Uh, right now, I've got it about, oh, a sixteenth of an inch or so over the, the bottom edge here. So that's about where I want it. Now I am gonna take a hard squeegee, a max, and come in here. I don't want it to move at this point because the next cuts that I make are gonna be, <coughs> excuse me, the next cuts that I make are gonna be really important in sizing this window. We want this double patterns that we're making for both doors. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna make a, just a little scratch in my film about a sixteenth of an inch past this edge of the trim here on the customer's car. And then I'm gonna make the same. Now if, you, if we were doing just one layer of film here, it would be even easier. Let me see if I can pull one back. It'd be even easier to see, but you wanna be careful on how hard you press. You certainly don't want to etch into the, to the trim on the customer's car. Up here, I've just kind of got it pushed in the corner and I'm making a, a, just a little mark in my film about 16th of an inch out. Uh, make sure I can see them good. Okay, so now at this point, I can really get rid of all this excess. That way we'll just get it out of the way so we don't have to mess with it. Double layer. Now, what we need to do, pull the bottom up, and now notice right in here, we've got some kind of bubbles coming out from the side, and we've even got some here in the bottom and a few in the top. And so what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna wet shrink the bubbles out of here. But right now we've got everything cut except the top of our pattern. We've got our bottom where we want it. We've got marks over here to make our final cut. So let's go ahead, reach around, and just tap this window just to where we, we've got it. You gotta be really careful with the automatic windows but just far enough so that we can get a knife in here to make this nice, smooth, final cut on the top of this window. To do that, I'm gonna press the uh, film all the way against the glass. I'm gonna get my knife in, and I've got the blade out quite a ways, and I'm keeping the knife level with the glass, the blade slightly lifted, And I'm going to keep going, and I'm keeping this angle low right in here. So now we've got that all the way down. I can tear the film. Same thing back over here in this corner. I can just lift and tear. Okay, so now what we need to do is take the film off of here separate it on our board and put it back up on here 
and do a little bit of uh, heat forming on here because what we're going to have is the finger bubbles and I'm going to teach you how to make those virtually disappear so that you don't have any problems once you get that up on the inside. There's some other things we're going to show you on the window over there, different ways to do it. Okay, so let's take this film. Okay, let's get this up here. I've got to finish making my pattern and really this doesn't have to be set, but it's easier for me if I squeegee this out so that I can see the marks that I made in the window uh, on the customer's car, just the little scratches on the film, because now I am basically just connecting the dots. You know, you could do this uh, with a, a marker, a Sharpie, instead of making the, the marks on the car if you feel more comfortable with that. You just want to make sure if the trim's running this way that your mark stays with uh, the edge of the trim. And so now I'm just going to come across holding that really tight and making my cut. Okay, so now while I've got this up here, what I need to do is round this corner off here. Now this is the extra that went behind the window frame. So I'm just going to come in and round that and cut it off of both of these pieces of film. And I'm going to do the same thing down in this bottom corner so that there's not anything sharp that could damage the film. Okay. Same thing here. Just want to see where the marks are. And just like this is the front of the window, just like the back, we want to get it lined up, get firm, so that the ruler doesn't stick or slide. Okay, and now it's always good to always keep breaking your blade. Now come in and do the same thing here. Just barely went around that corner and around that corner. Now, so what we've done is we've made two patterns. We've made, and this one we put up first with the glue facing us and this one uh, with the glue facing the other one. So we know that when we take this one here that it goes on the other window. And if we stay with that pattern of putting our first one up, if, we're, if we're the window we're cutting on, putting it with the glue facing us, it's always going to go on the window that we cut on. I'm go ahead and the curl here, you can still see that curl. I'm going to go ahead and turn that around and we'll use it over there on the other window. But what we've got to do here, it never hurts to check your work, looks good. What we're going to have to do over here on this window is I'm going to come in and wet it real good. Set my pattern up here on the window. Okay, roll it up. Set my pattern on here and kind of just a little bit up at the top there. Overlapped so that I'll have some room down here at the bottom to do my heat for me. And this is, and we're just taking everything and pushing it down here to the bottom of the window. And now we're not going to do that on the other window. We're going to do corner pressures instead of doing this. So you guys will know a couple of different ways to do it. But see these bubbles in here. That is the compound curve here and here on this particular window. Some cars are going to be worse than others. Uh, but, uh, you know, a lot of times just a couple of little shrink, shrinking a couple of little spots like this will save you a lot of time uh, when you go to install the, the film on the inside of the window. So, get our heat gun going, get it warmed up and get the right tools out here for it.
which really any hard card is going to work right now. I just want to make sure, this is the factory edge we were talking about. I just want to make sure that everything's straight up and down with that factory edge. If it's not, it just won't shrink as good. Now watch this. Distance, speed, and angle. And that, those are finger bubbles. I'm going to come in here, come down. Maybe I don't want to go all the way down if you're afraid of melting the film. Now I've got several small ones down there. Uh, maybe one this size right here, I can just come in and close the bottom and it's gone. The same thing with this one. Don't be afraid to experiment. Be careful with the seal here on the edge of the window. Never leave your heat gun on it for very long. Okay. This is going to make this window a lot easier. It'll probably install uh, with no bubbles down at the bottom. Uh, go ahead and get these over here. Now after getting all of these out, and again, I'm kind of aiming up here to watch for the trim. If you do get the trim hot, don't touch it. Let it cool off naturally. And a lot of times uh, it won't be damaged, but be careful with that heat gun. Okay, we've got that nice and smooth all the way around. Let's go ahead and, and get the window clean and take care of that and get it installed. So what I want to do is I'll just grab this film and this is the one that's been heat formed. And then we have our other one behind it. Now notice on the heat forming here because a little bit later we're going to look at some film. Can you see, see the small wrinkled areas here in the tinting? Uh, in a little while when we're doing, that's everywhere that we shrunk a finger bubble out. Uh, in a little while when we're doing the back window, what we're going to be doing is a little bit different method. We're spreading the shrink out more over the window. So let's get this though now over here. I've got this one rolled down and you know really the first thing about a clean install with a window is that people don't maybe take the time to think of the little things like the frame of the window even though this is a brand new car what i want to do is always come in and spray some glass cleaner down in there and and now i'm just pushing the paper towel up in there and I'm getting out any goo or rubber you know and this is a brand new car uh, that's that could be quite a bit of contamination for your window film you okay. know you might have a situation to where uh, you've got a felt and then you would use a masking tape either a white or a blue tape now we double cut the window. I'm going to show you two different ways to actually apply this window. And a, a lot of cars are, are, you know, one way or the other. But this one here, this is going to make it really easy. What we've got to do is we've got to get down past this felt in the bottom of the window. On the other door, I'm going to show you a different way than what we do here. But right now, let's just take and very easily get a hold of this door panel. Give it a tug. There we go. So now we've got it broke loose and there's a lot of panels. They're just little clips inside. So now I can simply come in here and pull this rubber completely out of the car. Now, sometimes this might be a situation where you would have to actually put some felt on this right here uh, and that of course is always an extra charge for the customer so I'll set that in there okay Now, 
now what I want to do is just take and clean this window with a glass cleaner. I'm using a single edged razor blade. I'm using a foamy glass cleaner. You know, a lot of people want to use a holder for the razor blade. So let your own feelings take you if you want the holder or the plain blade. But now notice I'm not pushing dirt and glass cleaner back into that gasket because I just cleaned back in there. So really I've been going more up and down here. So I can come in now. A little bit of practice folks with a six inch squeegee like this will get you a lot of skill. Now you've been watching us use a white towel and now here's a blue one. These are called blue squares. They're available from a lot of the manufacturers. Uh, they're also available at a lot of paint supply stores. Uh, and they're lint free basically, reusable. I usually keep one uh, in a side pocket. Now we've got the top. Usually keep one in a side pocket so that if I have to get something really clean, it's not been contaminated by some of my other tools. Now, right here, the rubber's out. I'm gonna squeegee just a little bit. I can't get the very bottom. So here I could do a couple of things. I can come in here with this clean, lint-free towel and I can come across and get everything really pretty clean or I could save a little bit of time and any dirt that's on here right now I would wash down in the bottom of the window. So now this window is ready to apply. I'm going to go ahead and wet the whole window since I went in and pulled the rubber out of the bottom of the window, wet my hand here, it's going to make it really a little bit easier for me because I can, I can pull, it's going to make it a little bit easier on me because I can pull the whole liner off of here. Now this protective liner, very slippery, either put it on top of your car You've got a trash can handy. My window's already been uh, prepared to accept this. I'm holding it with just the tips of my fingernails and I'm coming over. I'm sliding the bottom of the film in and then I'm sliding the top of the window right where I want it for a great application here. And that's about it right there. So, I'll make sure my tools are clean. Notice everything's moving around. That's uh, normal depending on how much film or, or uh, slip you put in your bottle and what type of film that you're using. But, what we can do by putting the water on it, we activated the adhesive. And so now, by putting the pressure on it, we're starting, it, we're starting the stick process on the window. And I keep just messing with it here as it gets closer and closer to being stuck because I want it in just that perfect spot where I've got a, an even gap, top and bottom. Now, my window's really not moving around on me very much there, and that's how I want it. So I'm going to take a clean paper towel, I'm going to fold it in half, and I'm going to take the hard card here and put the towel over it and come, and I'm going to really get a little bit more water that might be in there out 
and I'm sealing these edges as I go. And you can see right in here, I'm going back behind the edge. Now, just in case I pick up any dirt, I'm gonna go ahead and move this paper towel. So now I've got the whole top ready to go. I can go ahead, roll this window up, spray it real good, and come in. I never want to uh, squeegee up uh, because all I would be doing is pushing air uh, into the top. Now I can turn the squeegee around. All I would be doing is pushing air and water up into where the seal was there. Okay, so now we want to come in with a final. And all we're doing is putting a little bit more pressure. See the finger bubble there? We'll deal with that in just a minute. Mainly, I don't want to scratch the film at this point with a piece of dirt. So, I keep changing my towel around. Okay, right back here now. We can come in and get that out. I've got one more tool that I want to try out here. Right up in here, I feel like I might have got some air, and so I can come in and seal that out. And there we go. The window's tinted. We've still got to put the door panel back together for the customer. Get all of the application solution or soapy water, whatever you want to call it, out of there. And voila, we've got a nice window. I tell you what, let's do. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and tint the other window. Give this one time to dry, and then we'll come back and we'll actually put that rubber seal back in it and get the door handles taped up for the customer. So let's go ahead and go over to the other side. Okay, I've just got a little bit of head start on cleaning this, guys. I did it just like I did the other window over there. I cleaned the outside, then I rolled the window down and I cleaned the frame. Uh, and now I've came in and I've scraped the top part of the window. And I'm gonna take my clean rag and get right down in those corners. Go ahead and roll this up. Now, this is a little bit different. Uh, you can probably hear my razor blades hitting this bottom rubber, this bottom seal. And I wanted to do this for you because not every window is exactly the same. Uh, I'm gonna take this razor blade, kind of set it on its side so that I can scrape underneath that frame. Come back here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and get this all wiped down. But I'm gonna go ahead and use my clean rag and wipe this down real good. Now also, it's a brand new car. During the cleaning process, I noticed there was uh, just a little bit of glue where the dealer uh, had had some tags put on it. So always watch out for that. So now, we've got to get past this rubber seal down in here. I've got a couple of tools here called gasket wizards, uh, panel protectors. Uh, we sell these, a lot of film people sell them. They're great on a lot of cars because what you're gonna do is you'll find out that Murphy's Law says if you wanna do it a certain way, that car won't let you. Uh, this is giving you a couple of different ways. All I'm doing is there's a long side, short side. I'm taking the short side and sliding down in here to where now I can actually come in here and pull that rubber back and all the felt and everything's completely covered. I'm just gonna roll that window down just far enough that I can see the top of the window to apply the window film and I use that clean rag. So now I'm gonna go over here 
pull this liner. This liner though is going to be a little bit different uh, because I can't I can't feed the bottom in uh, and you'll find this pretty common probably a more common than where you were able to pull the door panel back or pull part of the trim out now I've left this I pulled it down over halfway and I've left several inches down there in the bottom uh, now I can apply the top part of the window and let's go over here and wet the window by the way so now I'm going to apply the top part of the window and then the bottom now remember too that this is this is the window that we cut double cut on the other side and okay and I don't want air to get directly into it but uh, and we didn't shrink it and so there's some other tricks that we can use uh, that I wanted to show you on this DVD and that's corner pressure to set any possible bubbles now I've got that pretty much where I want it right up here okay right there so now I'm going to squeegee it down and into place so that it'll quit moving around I don't want to squeegee all the way down to this this point right here that I'm pointing at you can see where the film kind of comes around that's what I call my changeover point to change over from top to bottom same thing up here in the front and you're going to find if you're not careful that you'll have small creases in your changeover point same thing as I did on that other window I'm just going to come in here and set these edges put a little extra pressure but just don't squeegee down to those points if you get some if you get some little creases in the changeover point you can always come back in a while and uh, if we have to on this car we'll come back in with a different tool a chiseler tool put some heat on it and get them to to set down I've got the top of this one just right so now I want to go ahead and roll the window up uh, before I pull that protective liner off though I want to come in since this has been rolled down I want to come in and really spray a whole lot of soapy water down into the bottom now I want to take one hand and I want to pull this to the side and remember this is dry glue so we want everything that it touches to be really clean and really wet okay now my changeover point this is where I'm working right now got the film down in there pretty nice I've just taken the one hand and been pulling down on my gasket wizard as I come across watch this is going to want to flip up uh, and that's perfectly normal right here flips up just keep going and now it's down in there what we'll do is take our max squeegee and squeegee as much as we can and since we didn't do a wet shrink now we're going to seal those bubbles out using corner pressure okay now since I'm since I'm going to use corner pressure I want to start in the middle I go all the way down continually moving my rag and I'm pressing these finger bubbles towards the very bottom corner of my window and, and you know guys it doesn't matter which way that you want to do this I'm showing you a couple of real easy ways to do it that'll work good for you okay so now we've got all of those out we might have some more pop up uh, what we'll do here in a few minutes is go over and uh, look at the other door we're going to do the quarter windows next and we'll just keep watching if we have a finger bubble pop up uh, 
we can wait a couple of minutes and get it down. No big deal. The SunTech film cures up yeah, really pretty fast, but it gives us enough time if something does pop up that we can go in and fix it. Okay, so now I've got this right at like I want it, but I do want to come in with this card. And now notice this card goes way back in the edge of the frame. So what I want to do, so I just want to take and make sure that I'm getting the very edges sealed. And sometimes with just a regular square card, that's hard to do. I'm going to go ahead now though and take this out of the car so that we don't have any possible damage. And wipe the car down. Now when we take our wizards out, our panel protectors out, we've got pressure directly up against the film. And that's what happened right there. Uh, now we've got just a little bit of a finger bubble. Before I move on to the next window, since I went ahead and pulled that out and let the pressure get up to it, I'm going to come in. I'm taking one of the white cards and pulling the rubber back. And really doing the same thing. It's just we disturbed it, uh, the, the film and the glue. We disturbed the whole setup when we pulled that panel protector out. So we're just going in, putting a little more pressure. And if we have to, here in a little while we can come back and do even more work on that window. Okay, the main thing here, window looks good. We gotta clean the customer's car up nice. So let's go ahead and get around and start doing some quarter windows now. Let's knock out these quarter windows real quick. And remember, longest point to longest point. Here's an obvious longest point. And now down here at the bottom, this is a little bit longer. So let's call this one, oh, it's probably from clear here to clear there, it's probably 21 uh, inches. Let's call it 22 inches and we can get this whole window. Let's go over here and cut a couple of them and get them ready to go. And we'll still use the the 20 we'll still use the 20 inch box. And a little bit long. Let's cut another one while we're here. Okay, now I'm going to go put uh, the extra one over here on the other side and we'll get that taken care of. That way our film's already stuck up on the car. It really, it doesn't matter which one of these we put on. Uh, we're probably not going to have to shrink these. You know, sometimes you might find some of these that need to be shrunk, but now notice we're going to have to cut all the way around here. So I lined that bottom up so that we wouldn't have to cut the bottom. Okay. Get that wet. The film's going to need to be a little bit wet. And again, factory edge to factory edge. If you wanted to double cut them, we would put glue to glue on the board, put these together, and we could double cut them. Now, the thing about double cutting windows like this is that we have to see through the window to cut it. And there's a couple of tricks that, uh, that we can use. We could put a light in there. Uh, let's get rid of the extra first. 
and ever so lightly you don't want to etch the glass on the customer's car and pretty often let's come in here and let's break a tip off of the blade so now we have to see to cut that we could put a light or we could just take some foamy glass cleaner because we're going to have to clean the glass in a moment anyway and we want to we want to bring this over about a sixteenth of an inch we just want the film the pattern barely big enough to cover all of the dots or the matrix at the edge of this window you might want to if you're doing a whole lot of these cars you might even want to keep a pattern uh, of the window to where all you would have to do is trace out that pattern but there we go that window's ready to go up on the inside it doesn't look like we're going to need to do a whole lot of heat forming on it so now we'll come in I'm gonna raise this trunk up make our rear window just a little bit easier also And we want to do basically the same type of clean that we did on the side roll-up windows. It's just not as important on this window that we uh, don't rub dirt into the sides. Now, instead of scraping the window, a lot of times you might want on these windows to use a steel wool, a zero 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 four aught steel wool but usually steel wool and scrunchy pads are left to the rear window now we've got all of our dirt off and we're already ready to apply this window right here so let's just go ahead and do that get my clean rag put up let's get over get my hand wet and now this we can pull the liner again all the way off and don't let those things lay on the floor uh, they are very slippery now I didn't want to put a lot of water at the top of that window I wanted to get it wet but not a lot at the very top and again I'm holding this with just my my fingers if I had got it wet at the top water could have ran down bringing dirt with it out of the top of the frame okay so that's perfect We want to come in now with our Max squeegee, making sure that all the dots are covered. Now, if the upholstery here had been a felt, a mohair, anything that was fuzzy, we could have very easily just taken a uh, little bit of the tape again and taped it up so now we've got most of the water out and it's starting to get easier guys because we're starting to repeat stuff uh, just like we did the side windows we want to come in here with our towel wrapped around this white card and we want to seal the edges of the window And there we go. So now we've got the sides and the and the top and the bottom sealed. Let's come in here and again just clean it up. And we're ready. We've got a nice tinted window for them. 
Now we're ready to go over and do the other quarter window. Let's go ahead. We've already got it up on the window. Let's just go over there and, and tent it now. Okay, we're over here to the other quarter window of this car and I want to make sure that that bottom lined up. And again, the reason I got the bottom lines up, that's that much less of a cut that I'll have to make. So the bottom of this window lined up. Let's go in here now and get our excess cut off. And when we cut the excess off, we'll be able to go in and then make our final cut. Good sharp knife, can't say enough. Use only the stainless steel blades when you're working on a customer's car. And again, I am very much a believer of breaking those tips off. And again, right here, you know, with a little bit of practice, uh, you'll learn how to make this cut to where you've got just enough pressure. I'm having a little bit trouble seeing that. So what I'm going to do is just come in, spray a little bit of glass cleaner. Now that I've got the glass cleaner on it, wow, makes a big difference. I'm able to just come in and make my cut. And you know, sometimes folks, that's a lot easier than carrying a light around. Uh, or if you've got someone helping you, that works out fine too. We've got this thing cut. Uh, I wanna put it over here on the board to hold it for us. I'm gonna go ahead now and clean the outside of this glass. And the glass cleaner that I used to, uh, the glass cleaner that I used to see what I was doing can now be used to scrape the window in here. And you know, this is, this is another setup to where you really want to watch to make sure there's no glue that might have been left from the customer's initial purchase at the dealership. Okay. Now I'm going to take and wipe all around here just in case. I don't want any dirt running down and I've got everything out so I can take this clean rag the lint free blue towel go around and I'm ready I'm going to go get it right now and put it in I always like to get my fingers wet makes it easier for me to kind of get this liner separated and of course keeps dirt off of the window. I'm going to come in to spray a little bit. I don't want a whole lot there. My film itself is already got a lot of water on it. Notice I'm never really giving a lot of the touch to the glue side. We just want to get this in position, get it wet. And now that we get everything covered, and now just now is it starting to not move around. If you find that your film's moving around too much on you try using just a little bit smaller amount of soap I'm really putting some pressure on it it doesn't hurt guys on all of your windows to put a double squeegee on them that means squeegee them once go back and squeegee them again I'm taking my hard card I've got the center part squeegeed twice got some of that set. 
I want to move in case I get dust or dirt. The SunTech film comes with a nice scratch resistant coating, but we still have to be a little bit careful during the application process. Okay, that window's done though, that's the good part. So now all I have to do is come in, wipe up, I see a little bubble. Just when you say a window's done, you guys will learn that's the magic phrase for a bubble to pop out. Let's go ahead now. We've got the front doors. We've got our rear quarter windows. Let's go back now and check our front doors and make sure there's no uh, finger bubbles. And the finger bubble, just an area looks like a finger of air. If there's any, we'll set them down now and then we'll get to work on that back window, okay? Okay, got all of our water out, doing a little bit of touch up. I want to check my door here. This is the side that we use the gasket wizard on. And oh, everything looks really good. I might get a little bit picky here. And there was a little bit of water. You know, really it's going to take you a while, guys, to, to notice just the, the very small things like that. But here we go. We've got a nice window uh, on the front and a nice window on the back. Let's go ahead and go over here and, and check out on the other door just what we've got going on there. Uh, oh, we've got to put that door back together. So let's look at it. We've, we can roll this one down because we don't have that seal We can roll there. this up and down only, guys, because it's been, uh, oh, 45 minutes or so probably since we tint, tinted the window and it's uh, relatively warm in the shop. So we're, all we've got to do is get it to fit down in the channel and pop it back together and roll the window up. Nice alternative to using the gasket wizard uh, or other means to maybe tuck that rubber and pull it back up. Guys, there's a lot of different doors. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do the doors. The, really, this method that, that we did on both of these windows are going to get you through on a lot of cars. Let's go ahead and get started now on the back window. What I'm going to do uh, to use soap on the back window to heat form this window, I'm going to get my paper towel nice and wet. I'm just going to come in with a bar, simple bar of ivory soap. Now again, could use baby powder uh, in certain situations. And I've got several DVDs on using baby powder. Uh, also, a dryer sheet, surprisingly, uh, and I've got several DVDs on using the dryer sheet. All in all, most cars, the soap's going to work fine for us. Uh, it's nice. We don't have to worry about anything, any harsh additives, especially with the ivory soap. And so I've got really now all, all that that did, there's a lot of soap on my rag and on my fingers uh, but uh, I'm just putting kind of a thin layer all over the back of that window and so now I'm going to come in here and get this side and of course we'll clean all of this off later now what this is going to do is allow the film to move around on this back window and there's several different ways to do the back window uh, you know not only with dryer sheets and baby powder or, or ivory soap there's a way to actually uh, use water wet shrink the rear window uh, it's going to depend on how hard the window is to tint uh, basically and this window here probably like I said earlier in the DVD, look around. It's not any harder, not any easier 
uh, you tent this window in one piece and you've got probably 60 70 percent of all cars let's go ahead now and and measure and get some uh, film for the back window out of the 40 inch box and this is going to allow us to put that rear window in in one piece And I want to put an anchoring line, something to hold this down. Uh, and when I finish, this line's going to appear like, a, like the letter H in the alphabet. I've got the rag nice and wet. I took some of the water out of it. And I'm going right across the center of the window. Now, going across the center of the window, I can come in and take the window film that, that we cut over there earlier, and it's rolled up backwards so that I can actually roll it now out across the customer's window the way that we're going to be working with it. Uh, and that's real important. This is in the middle, and we're covered pretty good over here. I'm going to move the film over just a little bit to center it. We're, we're covered everywhere on this window, so now is a perfect time to start trimming our edges. You can, you can see here the edge of our window. I want to come in and at this point leave oh, an inch and a half or two inches. I don't want the seal on the customer's car here. And I'm going to break my knife blade off again. I don't want to cut that seal and I don't want my film touching this seal down in here. So somewhere in between half. Now over here I've got some extra film and I can just certainly come down and make that cut. Over here pretty much the same thing. You notice the sides. Now, I'm not going to be shrinking the sides, so I might have made them just a little bit shorter up against the edge of the glass. It's hard to talk and cut, I've noticed. Okay, now, kind of hard to reach there. I can tear that off. I've got my film ready to make that H pattern that I spoke about earlier. And I've, I'm going to go ahead and trim it over here first. Get all of the trimming done. Do some practice with your knife on how hard it takes to cut, how much pressure it takes to cut one uh, or even two layers of window tinting. Okay, here now I've got my line going across, so I'm going to pull this edge up, and right in here, this is pretty important, I've got the side of the H, and I actually made it to appear, say if we're looking at a traffic map here, to be an intersection, and, and that, take, that took any sharp corners in here out. I'm going to do the very same thing to the other side over here. Uh, not only does this look like an H with maybe an intersection in it, but what we're doing is now we've got all of this extra film up and down to the factory edges. So now what we're going to be able to do, and our soaps allowing it to move around on the window, the soap was nice and dry. So now I'm going to take a heat gun and heat form the window. What you'll see me doing is three things. I'm going to be working with the distance the heat gun is from the window, the angle of the heat gun to the window, uh, and also the speed at which I move it. Let's get the heat gun and get started on it now. Okay, we've got the heat gun, uh, letting it warm up for a minute, always on high. That way the heat is a constant. Uh, it's getting nice and warm. We've got our film 
laid out in an H pattern. We can only shrink top to bottom, very important. You can see, and by putting this over your shoulder, by the way, the cord, you'll save uh, a lot of heartache with, with uh, the cord getting up against the car. You wanna be very careful, belt buckles, anything that you might be wearing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm taking all of this film that the soap is allowing it to move around. We've got it anchored with the water and the H, so everything's gotta shrink straight down. So distance that I am from the film, the angle, if I'm up here, I'm going down, up here, I'm going up, right at the edge, I come straight in on the, on the window to protect the customer's trim and the customer's paint. So it's the angle, how close you can see it kind of blowing around here, and then how quick I move it. Uh, so let's get started here. I'm gonna go across about, in fact, let me, let me get right over here and I'll start this and you can see now that that very top part looks kind of wrinkled up uh, that's fine that's the way I want it to look I don't want lines starting to come sideways now you can see here that when I press this down onto the glass that all of the bubbles and the roughness disappeared. I don't want to take my hand any further than the area that I've already heat formed. Okay, so I'll take about half of that. Let me get this one caught up right here. So now I'm going to come in and I'm just kind of keeping the bubbles flat, moving them around to where they're straight up and down. This one kind of turning sideways on me. I don't want that, so I'm going to just go ahead and push it down. It's getting over there towards the other side. So let's go ahead and finish this one. And notice it's starting to get flat against the window. Now again, we have this cut about an inch on an average away from the edge of our window so that if we burn the very edge of this window film. We want this all to be tight. If we burn the very edge of the window film, we can cut it off because right around in here is the actual edge of the window. So while I'm over here, let's go ahead and get all of this here. This is, oh, about the same amount of shrink, most likely. And again, uh, I'm just gonna start towards the middle of the window Put this heat gun over my other shoulder. And I'm gonna start about in the middle of the window, here and there, and work my way up. And as I work my way up, I'm gonna push it down. And if I have to re re-aim directions of some of the bubbles I can okay now we're getting up into the area where the paint might go if you didn't tint this uh, the, the these are the black lines up at the top of the window On this particular car, those lines though, the film sticks pretty good. Sometimes it'll give us a little bit of a problem. Okay, so this side of the window is really pretty well shrunk out. So now I'm gonna go to the other side so I can get that to lay down. And now notice 
it's pretty smooth there's some rough spots in it this other side I'm going to do a little bit different for you uh, I think you'll find it looks a lot different and I'm going to teach you how to test your work with a wet test we kept all of this with the soap under it so the film would move around I've actually got a lot of this so I'm just going to pull that flat with the area that I've been working at now if you can if you can get in on right in here there's a couple of small bubbles at the bottom of this window and that's the kind of thing there's another one I'm kind of forcing in there that's the kind of thing that'll keep it from laying down on the inside so we've been at this angle here but now that we're down there at the very edge let's come straight in on it and keep the gun moving but get those out of there now we're going to be a lot better off and we just go down here you know i'm going to do this like i said just a little bit different i'm not pushing the bubbles down with my hand like we did on the other side and making it nice and smooth uh, i just went ahead and shrunk the whole thing now i could press all of those out of there but we're going to do something a little bit different because sometimes getting all of those all pressed out of there it is a little bit difficult i don't want you to crease the film thinking that you've got to have it nice and flat looking let's kind of rough that up a little bit uh, as long as you get your edges like i was showing you the small bubbles just now down at the bottom of the window as long as you get those small edges laid flat you've got a lot of your work done and i've got just a little bit now this is wanting to turn sideways if i hit that with and i and it just turned on me real quick if i hit that with the heat gun it wouldn't work as good as if i turn it back up towards the factory edge and boom that uh that makes a huge difference okay we've got it pretty well shrunk out this area here and a little bit up there at the very top obviously isn't laying down as much as that other side and i left it like that because again i don't want you to possibly crease a window because you, you think it's got to lay perfectly flat when you're not sure if you've got the window shrunk enough uh, whether you might have to well, you might have to come in and do some finger bubbles like we did on those side windows what i'm going to do now and this is a wet test i'm going to lift up this side of the film and get it nice and wet just lay the film back down over it wet the outside of the tinting and that way i'm ready to give it a a test to see if and this will be particularly good for you guys just getting started and the squeegee that i'm using that's just a regular black squeegee without the handle on it and i've got it cut at really an extreme angle if we were to use any of our other squeegees the blue max or the white max or even the six inch younger squeegee that we were cleaning the windows with we could crease it and the whole purpose of this is to not crease it so with my hand i'm getting it started this is over here where i got it wet when we raised it up this is real flexible it runs over areas in the film and again doing a wet test if there's an area that you just don't think and i'm just going to the corners here people uh, if there's an area that you don't think you can get out leave it in there what we're looking for is down here at the very bottom like right in here i'm pretty sure that will come out of there but let's say this bubble i wasn't <clears throat> excuse me too sure about so now the whole thing is laying down i got a couple of little bubbles right in there uh, so those I'll probably want to do a, a little bit of shrinking with. Okay, let's just go ahead and take this out. 
because we can and I want you guys to see that this can be done with a wet test right in here same thing up at the top of the window we just squeegee it into our corners we found a couple of spots I'm using both hands we found a couple of spots down here that it's going to come in handy to go ahead and heat shrink them so let's go ahead and heat shrink those couple of little spots where we've got the chance Okay. Oh geez, they must have not been bad because looks like I've got them closed up. But let's just do this. Let's go over it with the heat gun a little bit and a gold card. I just don't want those suckers popping up when we go to put this up on the inside. So now really the only thing that we've got left to do is <laughs> excuse me cut this on the outside to fit all we've got is a rough cut so what we'll do is go ahead use to be able so we can see again a little bit of glass cleaner we're going to have to clean this window anyway so a little bit of glass cleaner is really going to go a long ways with me on being able to trim this uh, out of here so that it'll fit. I can see really, really good. And I'm keeping my eyes right over this cut. If I'm back here a ways or if I'm too far there, it's just not going to work. Got to keep your eye right over it so that your line of vision and I'm giving myself, oh, a sixteenth or more of an edge here and I'm keeping this knife really low to the glass okay I made quite a bit of a cut there and I was lifting up on it just to see how long it was going to cut and right in there it kind of okay now let me get over here And prior proper planning, always look inside of your, of your window before you tend to, to make sure how much space you have. This is cut really close, uh, and really that's the way we want to cut it. But uh, no, if you've got a couple of inches in there, it's certainly not going to hurt anything. To leave it just a little bit long. Sometimes it'll help it stick on that black matrix there at the top. There's several different ways that, to deal with that that we talk about on some of the different DVDs. So right here though I've made quite a bit of a cut more. This is a new blade but never ever scrimp on blades. Always break this tip off. Much easier cut. You know, as you start tinning and using this knife, you're going to learn the feel of what it feels like to cut. I suggest really getting a car window and uh, one of your cars, maybe an older one, and just putting some scrap film up on it and practicing cutting with your knife to make sure you understand just how hard you need to, to push to get it to cut through. Okay, let's get this window now up here on the board. And what we're going to do is a reverse roll. I want to make sure this is the way it came off of the window. This was the outside facing me. And so I know that this is the glue and the liners facing me. And so we'll set that right there for now because uh, We've got to get over here and clean this window off. Get some more glass cleaner up there. Uh, okay, and really when we were using the glass cleaner, we could actually see the film better and it was starting to soak in on the window. A couple of ways to tint uh, 
on the back window to clean before you tint the window. One would be a scrunchy pad. Uh, one is a quadruple odd. I think earlier I said three odd uh, or three zeros and Use then either triple one. Odd. Let me get in the car here and do some cleaning. Uh, basically, this white scrunchy will go over the window real quick. Uh, always keep this scrunchy clean so that you don't run a chance of you'll have to really scrub hard too with it but that so that you don't run a chance of scratching anything on your glass so always keep that scrunchy clean or you know that's looking pretty good yeah, keep the scrunchy clean or, or just use the steel wool let's go in here now and clean the window with the squeegee which is always if you want it is on the outside of your car believe me that's one thing that you'll get used to tinting windows kind of remains constant if you want in a door that's the door that's locked okay again clean our tools we come in and went by squeegeeing this back window We know, we can see, we wipe the outside off and so we can see and make sure that there's no dirt left up there. Now, let's wipe everything down. This is all glass cleaner. Uh, it's its intended purpose. So now, let's get again, if you need it, it's on the outside of the car. Let's get some water because the chemicals in glass cleaner, I don't like the idea of them being on my window. Plus, so I want to get all of them off. Plus, it's just always a good idea when you're cleaning your windows, especially getting started, to clean these windows twice. Same thing on your roll-up windows. Uh, you know, clean them twice and I think you're going to have fewer problems. You just always want to be safe. Okay, so now we're ready to go with this here. Looks really good, nice and clean. Let's go ahead and get the film and put on it and get the car cleaned up. Let's okay, go. we've got the back window clean. We've got everything ready. This is a big piece of film. We've got to get it all the way over there without getting any dirt on it. You might be outside right now, who knows. So I'm going to show you a way to do what we call reverse rolling on the film. And so basically what we're going to do, it's, it's nice and we want it to stick to our glass, our transfer board. But we want to take and pull the liner about halfway down and really just really use a lot of water in here. Because what we're going to do now is take the liner we just pulled, put it right back up on there. That way, uh, if the wind's blowing, you're outside, or you just, you know, you, you want to keep it clean, it, this is going to be a, a lot easier way to handle a big piece of glass like that. Now right here, I'm just running my finger down the side. You could just separate the film again at the bottom. And what I'm doing is now I'm going to pull the bottom up Oh, to within, say, a half of an inch. And the reason I'm leaving that half inch in there, get this wet, is uh, I don't want the liner to move around on me. Uh, because if the liner moves around on me, when I'm rolling it up, we could get contamination in there. This is going to be uh, the bottom of the trunk. And all I'm doing here is I'm rolling this film forward into a pretty tight roll. I'm trying to keep everything on the factory edges straight. But uh, I had it away from the glass. Now I can go like this and roll it. Uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever you're the most comfortable with is gonna work. The main thing is, is that we keep it straight when we're rolling it here and that we roll it all the way up. 
Okay, now now that I've got it rolled up and this is the bottom part of the window, now the liner is going to stick to the roll right here. And so I want that. And I'm going to go ahead and get in the, in the car and wet this window. You know, right now, this would last quite a while. The film all rolled up like this is uh, oh, probably good for 10 minutes. Now, got this nice and wet. So I want to come in, unroll enough of this to where I can see what I'm doing. The liner is, is rolled around on a reverse roll and is now on this side of the window. Let me get a little bit of it up here. And I'll show you. Right there's the liner now. And I just keep on rolling it get it stuck up on the glass. Now I can pull the liner away and get rid of it. And now I want to position my film exactly for a perfect fit right there. And I've got a little bit on an edge right here. That I hadn't caught earlier, so I just was able to go in and take it out of there. Okay. Now, let's start in the middle. We don't want our film to move. There's several ways to squeegee this out, you can go straight across, divide it into four pieces, uh, one, two, three, four, uh, whatever is going to work best for you guys. I suggest you start with this here, just starting in the middle like I'm doing, and go on down into the corners, which is exactly what we're doing with this window here, and it's really turning out fine. We've got corner pressure, just like we had on our side roll-up windows there, working for us as we squeegee into these corners. Same thing over here. And finally, in our last corner, putting a lot of pressure, especially on the black matrix down here at the bottom to get it to stick. But there we go. Right now, if you don't feel comfortable with the amount of, of water that you got out on your first one, you can certainly come back, do a second squeegee. It's not as important on this second squeegee that you start in the middle because you've already got your film lined out. At this point, you're just getting extra water towards your edges. Uh, and then when we go in there to the edges, we're able to take you know, our white card or possibly a 3M gold card, fold our paper towel in half over the card and come in just like we were doing on all the other windows of the car. We finish up this back window doing the exact same thing sealing our edges and so as you can see from the video here there's a lot of techniques 
that you use on the same windows, whether they be quarter, side windows, or rear windows. There are a lot of different types of windows. Sometimes different windows require a different technique. A little bit of water right here. But the reverse rolling really works on a just a, a huge, huge amount of windows. Okay, so I've got all the way around. I tell you what we're gonna do always. Again, we're gonna clean up the customer's car for them. We're gonna leave it at least as clean, if not cleaner, than what we found it. So let's get the car cleaned up. Okay, got the whole car cleaned up. I'm gonna take a little bit of tape. I'm gonna lock the windows where they can't be rolled down. I'm just gonna put a little piece of tape over the customer's roller for them so there's no mistake that they won't leave the windows rolled up. And there we go. We're ready to deliver this back to the customer now. The American dream does not come to those who fall asleep. Thank you.